So, I watched this debate, Is Christianity Rational?, with David Smalley and Randall Rouser. Now, it's interesting to watch because it was really obvious that Randall Rouser has had a lot more experience in formal debates. And he was treating this much more, much less like a YouTube debate, which you see on YouTube. A lot of Christians will get up there, a lot of anti theists will do this all the time. And it turns into just a general grab bag debate. It goes off topic and it just kind of becomes, did God exist, does God exist, you know, generally debating about some of the aspects of Christianity, like did Jesus rise from the dead. Now, Randall Rouser tried to keep it more specific to the topic and just prosecute the case, is Christianity rational? And in that sense was kind of really successful. Um, his opening statement was bizarrely flaccid, but after, after you got through that, he kind of made a couple of key solid points where he basically, I won't go so far as to say proved Christianity is rational, but proved it is rational to believe Christian beliefs based on these criteria that he was laying out. So it was more like a formal structured debate where he's saying, yes, it is rational, given these as the criteria. Um, David Smalley was what, what, he made a couple of key mistakes. Really obviously doesn't have training in these formal type of debates. Um, he was kind of generally trying to more broadly argue that it wasn't rational to believe Christ Jesus rose from the dead. So he was kind of trying to zero in on, it's not rational to believe that, therefore Christianity isn't rational. Um, the, what weakened his point is he made three key mistakes, one of which is irrelevant, um, and two are fairly important. The first one he made, which is irrelevant, they went down this probably like a 15-minute you know, rabbit hole, where they were both saying the exact same thing, David Smalley just didn't clearly hear what Randall Rouser said. So they go through this, seriously went on for like 15 minutes, and, and read, David Smalley was going on this long diatribe about, the, he goes, he goes, now wait, 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 he stops Randall Rouser, because Randall Rouser goes, you, basically what Randall Rouser said to him in a nutshell was, if you're going to say that all these Christians, there's something like a billion Christians, are irrational for holding their Christian beliefs, you're going to have to prove that. You're going to have, that's, you're going to have a burden of proof for that. You're going to have to demonstrate that to be the case. So, David Smalley totally mis, misunderstands what he means. Legitimately. He wasn't, wasn't playing a game with him. He just misunderstood it. So he goes, wait, wait, wait. Let me stop you right there. I have all these Christian friends. I know all these Christian people. I think they're rational human beings. I think they can balance their checkbook and maybe, you know, learn things about politics and have clear understanding and education. It's just when it comes to this particular belief that I think they are irrational in holding this particular belief. Well, it's the exact same thing that, that Randall Rouser said. He goes, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> you know, you think that Christians are irrational in relation to the Christian beliefs. I swear to God that went on for 10 minutes and they were both saying the exact same thing. I swear to God. Um, and it was legitimate. David Small, I wasn't playing a game with him. He just misunderstood as he goes on this long explanation about how, you know, I love Christians. They can be really rational. I'm not saying they're irrational. I'm just saying they're irrational in relationship to this particular set of beliefs. And that's exactly what Randall Rouser said. So he goes on this long 10-minute explanation to come back to the exact same thing that Randall Rouser said. It just didn't hear him clearly. That took about 10 minutes. So that's an irrelevant mistake. I don't really blame him for that, just misunderstanding. The mistake that was a little bit more important, I don't necessarily blame him for this either, but it was interesting. This is where I, I got hip to the fact that he's not used to doing these type of debates because he did something that Matt Dillahunty, for example, would never, ever, ever do in a million years. Somewhere in his explanation about whether Christianity is rational, he goes... He asserts, basically, you know, the reason why most Christians believe what they believe is because they were indoctrinated into it because that's what they were taught to believe. Bang! Blanket assertion. Now, you will never, ever catch Matt Dillahunty doing that. You will never have him make a general, here is why this exists. Why? Because he's had too much experience in these debates. He may have done it way back when, when he first started doing these debates, but as soon as you open yourself up like that, you know, you're basically making an assertion. Oh, yeah? You got any stats on that? So that's how most people come to their beliefs, huh? Are you going to prove that? And that's basically what Randall Rouser started doing. So they went down another rabbit hole along those lines. And that particular rabbit hole, Randall Rouser was 100% correct. 
he starts going. He he made the blankets. He didn't recognize that he did it. Pretty sure he doesn't doesn't have a lot of experience. He he has experience on a radio show, I guess. But that's very different from here. Here's the things that I'm asserting in a debate. Every time you assert in a debate, Christians should take heed of this a, a hundred times out of a hundred, because every single solitary time you assert something in a debate. You have to demonstrate it to be the case. If you make a blanket assertion, this is how, why most people have their beliefs. I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm getting that right. I, I might have mis, misspoke on what the actual assertion was, but it was something like that. A general assertion about how most people come to their Christian belief, why most people are Christians. You made a really blanket one. And then they go down this other rabbit hole where, where Randall Rouser was again, this time totally justifiably, you're going to have to demonstrate that to be the case. Do you have any studies to back that up? And then he starts challenging Randall Rouser and goes, look, you just used an anecdotal piece of evidence. And he's going, yeah, I used an anecdote properly to say, here is somebody who is indoctrinated into atheism, proving that there is such a thing as someone being indoctrinated into atheism. And that's, he wasn't making a general assess, a statement like, most people who are atheists are indoctrinated into atheism by their parents, which is exactly what David Smalley did. See, this is why I say you guys should watch Matt Dillahunty debates all the time, because he's really good at stuff like this. He'll never make a mistake like that. Now, maybe he did a long time ago, and it blew up in his face, and he learned the hard way that you don't do that. But he would never, ever do that. You can't just generally make a statement, you know, an atheist on Twitter Atheists who debate you in YouTube debates and on Twitter and when you're just talking to atheists in general, they do stuff like this all the freaking time. The only reason you're a Christian is because you were raised to be a Christian. Okay, I wasn't raised to be a Christian, so that's not true in my case. The only reason you're a Christian is you were born in North America and, you know, you're in a Christian society. I get why they're arguing that, and I get why they perceive that. And you can say, yeah, that's, there's some evidence that that's true, but you can't just blanketly state, that's why most people are Christians, or that's why most people have belief, which is what David Smalley did. Now, that's just a question of discipline. He, he, he hasn't been in enough of these to know that you can't do that. You know, So that's not that big of a mistake either. The other mistake he made, a little bit more, a little bit more intense... Uh, you know, Randall Rouser kept saying he was straw man in Christianity. Here's the thing. Again, this is standard operating procedure in the atheist community. So most of the atheists watching him, first of all, assert that most, pe most people are Christians because they were indoctrinated into it. Now, that's a blanket assertion. You can't just say that. Yeah, there's, you're going to find a hundred anecdotal examples of people who were raised to be Christian who now are Christian. Sure. But that's not necessarily why most people are Christians. That's a blanket assertion that you're going to have to back up with solid facts. And those facts can't just be, I talked to this guy, Joey, and he was raised Christian, and his parents wanted him to be a Christian, now he's a Christian. You know, you're going to have to show the analytics, like, that's a, that's a pretty broad assertion. And it doesn't get us anywhere. In terms of rational, it actually underscores the case that Randall Rouser was trying to make. There were a couple of different ways that Randall Rouser was arguing is perfectly rational. Rational to believe in Christianity. Not necessarily Christianity is true. That's the key. That's the real mistake that David Smalley made. That's the biggest, the glaring error in the whole thing. Is David Smalley was confusing, is it plausible? Do I believe Jesus rose from the dead, which he clearly doesn't, and we know he doesn't, he's an atheist, fine, we get that, with it is not rational to believe that. That's the key difference. He never framed his argument properly so that he was prosecuting a case. You see what I'm saying? Randall Rouser was. After his flaccid opening statement, the entire time he was making clear arguments. And what he was saying was basically, okay, he had one analogy in there that was fantastic that David Smalley didn't quite fully process or understand. He said, and it had to do with the indoctrination. He was basically saying, he was said to David Small, you are mistaking, I believe this, this is plausible to me, David Smalley, or this is the truth, according to me, David Smalley, with is it rational? So he uses an example of moral realism. Moral realism has really good arguments against it. 
I thought this analogy was really good, so I'm going to repeat it in full. So he says, moral realism has really good arguments against it, okay? There are people who will debate there are no such thing as moral facts, and they can be really convincing that maybe there are no such thing as moral facts. But when a parent raises a child, that's why I thought this was a good analogy, because it really makes sense. When you raise your child, you raise them up in moral realism. You go, don't do that. Why? It's wrong. What do you mean, why? I'm the parent, and it's wrong. Why is it wrong? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Go ahead. Bow. That's why it's wrong. All right, no, fine. You don't, you don't beat your kids. Crap. Whatever. It's how we roll here in my house. You don't want to play that way. You're probably... Um, no, we don't have kids. We have a sweet little angel of a kitty cat who never does anything wrong. So we don't have to teach her more wheels. Why? Because she's no malice inside of her spirit at all. She's the sweetest thing on earth. Never done one ounce of wrong. I had a, we had a, a, a cat earlier, Snoobo, male cat, that I got into fights with. He was a nice little cat. I mean, he was a sweet little guy, too, but you would get in fights with him once a week. I've never gotten in a fight with this cat. We had him for three years now. Never once. Never once she's done anything wrong. She's just the sweetest thing on earth. So I don't have to explain the facts of moral realism to her. But Randall Rouse's point was actually really solid. There are perfectly legitimate arguments against moral realism that make sense and they potentially defeat moral realism. He wasn't debating whether moral realism is true or false. He was saying it is perfectly rationally justified, though, to teach your kids moral realism. Don't do that, Johnny. Why? It's wrong. Don't pull your sister's hair, Johnny. I want to, but it's wrong. Keep doing it. You'll go to bed without supper. Or I'll beat you. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> I'll beat you. <laughs> um... So you see his point? And it's perfectly rational for the kid to adopt that form of moral realism, whether it's true or false, false, irrelevant. And I thought he did this pretty successfully because what David Smalley was constantly conflating and then getting mad and blaming Randall Rouser for not defending the core of Christianity is that the debate, what was being debated, he kept accusing Randall Rouser of going off topic. Randall Rouser kind of did go off topic a few times, but it was because he brought them off topic. He's the one who asserted out of nowhere that, you know, most Christians are indoctrinated into Christianity. That's why they're Christians. He said that. So Randall Rouser, in the course of the debate, yeah, went off topic and said, you got to demonstrate that to be the case. So that did pull them off topic. But the, own, the, the other times he was accusing Randall Rouser of going off topic, it was because he didn't really fully understand what was being argued to him. Wasn't, is Christianity true, false? Is it, is it right that Jesus rose from the dead? Is it rational to believe that? That's a very different argument. So then they went down a, a rabbit hole that was not actually a rabbit hole, it was more in line with, you know, the topic. Randall Rouser starts going into some of the classic arguments for, um, you know, the classic Jesus, here's the evidence that Jesus rose from the dead, we blah, 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 we've got the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians, blah, 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 blah. Starts going into a classic breakdown of some of those arguments for the evidence for the resurrection. Now, if you're an atheist, don't mishear this. It wasn't an argument about whether that's true or false. That's what David Smalley kept constantly mistaking. Is it plausible? He, he kept mistaking, is it plausible? Do I believe it? Is it true? With is it rational to believe such things? Now, one of the ways that he tried to prove that it was irrational was by strawmanning Christianity. Not necessarily arguing successfully that it was complete craziness, but saying it in ways that's really dismissive and sounds nuttier than it in fact is. A lot of atheists do this. A dead Jew on a stick rises into the sky. Something like that. Some really, really like lame-ass, like, obnoxious framing. Matt Dillahunty will do that a lot. So that's standard operating procedure in the atheist community, even in the course of debates where Matt Dillahunty... See, why it's good to watch his debates is he, he generally sticks to He's generally very disciplined in what he will argue for. So you'll never catch him make a blanket statement about God does not exist, nor will you catch him make a blanket statement like, this is why most Christians are Christian, because you open yourself up. You've got to now demonstrate that to be the case. You can't just say it. Says who? And then you've got to go, if that's what you're actually presenting, you go, says these meta-analytic studies and these studies over here and these studies and this is case closed. That's how you do it. That's why I keep saying to people, 
The only debate that Matt Dillahunty has lost, and he's lost three times out of three, is on the secular utility of religion. Why? Because the second you assert that religion is profoundly useful, someone goes, prove it. You go, okay, here are these meta-analytic studies, here are these thousands of studies. These clearly demonstrate that intrinsic religiosity is beneficial to both the person who practices it and to society at large, case closed, slam dunk. Debate over. Those are the only debates he lost, and he lost them all three times. Why? Because the second you assert that religion is profoundly useful, you have thousands of studies to back you up. If you were going to assert that most people are Christians because they've been indoctrinated into it by their parents, I get why you think that. I get why it's convincing to you, because a lot of the Christians you meet are like that. But that's not case closed. You're going to have to demonstrate that by, by statistics, studies. Look at the data. Does the data actually support that conclusion? I'm not sure that it does. I don't really care, just so you know. I'm just saying Matt Dillahunty would never assert that out of, out of thin air. David Smalley kind of just asserted, asserted that out of thin air. A lot of atheists do that, especially Twitter atheists, YouTube atheists. They will do that almost routinely. You know, this is why you're a Christian. Got any evidence to back that up? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I just kind of think it's so because I talked to this guy who's a Christian and I was raised Christian and, you know, all my friends think it's so. Now, so what Randall Rouser was basically arguing for. Now, I, to be fair to David Smalley, I think that Christians should... We're apologetics and this is YouTube. So I'm not necessarily in favor of keeping the debate formally structured so that you just prosecute the case, is it rational to believe in Christian beliefs? I think that's, you know, you might as well try to go whole hog. You might as well, in the course of a debate like this, try to really answer the question and go, this is exactly why I think it's true, and answer it for real. There's no harm in it. It's a YouTube debate. You know, sometimes the lack of structure, the fact that it's a little bit amateur hour, can be in service of a greater cause. So I don't see any particularly good, really, it's, you're not being scored on it. It's not an academic exercise. Nobody's grading Randall Rouser. If they will, they'd go, okay, so he prosecuted the case here. He was trying to stick to a formal structure. This is what David Smalley didn't clearly perceive in the moment. Maybe he gets it in hindsight, but he didn't get it in the moment. And the formal structure was just trying to answer a question. Is it rational to believe such things? Not are they true, not is the evidence for them really strong and good, is it rational to believe them? So he had two basic arguments. You're trained up in it as a kid, you're indoctrinated into it. When your parents tell you, your trusted elders tell you, you're, I'm kind of conflating something he's argued in the past with what he argued here, but he's argued this in the past. And this is just eminently reasonable. It's not whether it's true. It's not whether you should, if you're a 15, 14 year old boy and your parents tell you this is so and your peer group tells you this is so and your church elders tells you this is so, it's completely rationally justified for you to believe this is so. Period. That's not arguing that it's true or false. It is saying, yeah, they've been indoctrinated into it, indoctrinated into it but it's completely rationally justified for the person hearing, these are the facts about life, little Johnny. Jesus is God, Jesus loves you, Jesus died on a cross for you, little Johnny. If your, if your trusted elders are teaching you that as fact, and your church, people, church folk are teaching you that as fact, and these are the authorities in your life, it's 100% rationally justified for you to go, okay, I agree, I believe you. Now, you can start exploring that on your own as an adult, Obviously, I hope you should. Some other Christians, <laughs> a handful of Christians like me say you should. Other Christians don't want you to. <laughs> I, I think you should. Because then it becomes, is it true? But is it true is different from, is it rational to believe? Are you rationally justified in believing such? So this is the thing that they were not debating the same topic. Randall Rouser was trying to keep it specific to the context. Is it rational to believe X? Not... Is X true? Now, one of the things that David Smalley did, which atheists do as a matter of course, and atheists, if you're listening to this, you don't gain any ground against the ontology of Christianity by presenting it in Dumbo language. 
Doesn't make you seem smart. Doesn't make Christianity seem unbelievably stupid for you to go, a dead Jew on a stick rises, rises up in the sky, disappears into the sky. Ha, 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 ha. How could it be rational to believe that? You don't gain anything by painting it that like that. It makes you sound dumb. Honest to God, even Matt Dillahunty does that a lot. It makes him sound dumb in that moment. Why? Because he's perfectly capable of framing it in a way that's a lot more intelligent than that. And if he were in a debate with somebody serious, like, you know, the Jordan Peterson or something, he never talked like that. And as a matter of fact, he was in a debate. He did that with, Matt Dillahunty did that with, uh, who was that guy, uh, who did he debate did, like three, a month ago, the banana guy. Um, 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 I forget his name right now. The mustache, I can see his face. He's got a mustache, he holds a banana. He goes, well, Matt, you just don't, you just don't want to believe in Matt. You just don't want to believe in God, Matt, because you want to be a sinner, so. He's Australian, I can do his accent, I don't remember his name offhand. Uh, it's, as soon as I put the video down, I'll remember it. So in that debate, he did that. He goes, no, it's, you know, no, it's not plausible to believe Christianity. It does some inane, like, it's not even straw man version of Christianity. It was like some insane man version of Christianity. You know, a blood ritual, blood magic performed to save you. So Jesus saves you from himself and then blah, 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 blah. It doesn't make you sound smarter when you do that. It makes you sound like a dumbass. It honestly does. Even Matt Dillahunty. I'm not saying Matt Dillahunty is dumb, but when he starts talking like that, it sounds dumb. Why? Because he's perfectly capable of framing Christianity in a way that sounds a lot more reasonable, a lot more sane, a lot more plausible than that. And if it was a debate with someone he, he respected completely, he would. Or that person would laugh at him. You understand? If he said that to Jordan Peterson debate, he'd be the laughing stock of that debate. Got away with it saying the banana guy, but banana guy could have called him out too. Like that's that's not Christianity. That's insane man version of Christianity. I get that atheists do that a lot. But you should stop doing that. Why? It's, one, it's undisciplined, two, it doesn't prove it doesn't get you anywhere. Doesn't get you anywhere. It's, and, and Randall Rouser was trying to point this out to him, and David Smalley didn't quite grasp this. Why? Because you guys are so used to talking about Christianity in such dismissive terms, and it helps you to reinforce with each other how stupid you guys think it is, but you're in a debate with people who don't think it's stupid. So to talk about it in terms that are so, you know, dismissive, I'm not saying I care. Don't hear this correctly. It doesn't bother me. Not getting all triggered out and, oh, I cry about this, or poor Christianity. I'm saying it's not, not helpful to your argumentation. Makes you sound stupid. However much you think it makes you sound smart, it doesn't. Only makes you sound smart to other imbecile atheists. Because they go, yeah, high five, we really trash Christianity. No, you gain nothing. You frame it in the dumbest possible way possible and knock down your straws. Very definition of a straw man. F frame it in the dumbest way possible, then knock it down. The reason why they call that a straw man is because it's easy to do. It's undisciplined. Even Matt Dillahunty does it. The reason why you're calling it a straw man, it's not that it's technically inaccurate. Okay, technically Jesus was Jewish. People were arguing that in the comment section. Deal with what he's actually saying. Technically Jesus is a Jew. Technically he did say he rose from the dead. Technically he is disappearing in the sky. That's not what, that's, a straw man doesn't necessarily need to be inaccurate. It's just framing in a way that's so pitiful, and then knock down your pitiful interpretation of it, and you have gained nothing. That's why they call it a straw man. You gain nothing by knocking down a straw man. You do not gain. You have not successfully conquered the ontology of Christianity. You've successfully conquered Dumbo version of it. But you're perfectly capable of framing in a way that's harder to challenge, called steel manning. So you should do it. Just as an intellectual discipline, you should do it. Just as a virtue for debates like this, you should do it. Especially on YouTube. You know? I mean, in, in a formal debate, nobody would ever talk like that. Because they'd be a laughing stock. Nobody would ever get away with that in a formal debate. Matt Dillahunty did not try with Jordan Peterson, nor would he ever. Why? Because Jordan would be like, well, are you kidding? What am, I, what am I, debating a clown here? <laughs> you know, okay, we can end this debate right now. Why? Because that's a ridiculous way to talk. I get it. You guys talk like that all the time. To each other. But it doesn't gain you anything. It is called straw manning for a reason. Why? Because it's some absurd version. It's a play act version of Christianity that you've erected so you can knock it down easier. 
And as Randall Rouser successfully pointed out, you could do that with atheism all day long. And it doesn't make you sound smart. Christians do that with atheist, atheist beliefs all the time. So you're saying something came from nothing? <laughs> I don't have enough faith for that. <laughs> I don't have enough faith to believe that. And do you go, wow, that guy really outsmarted me, boxed me in, and you go, wow, that guy's really kind of not worth talking to. It's the latter. Thank you, the latter. So, David Small is perfectly, I mean, he seems like a bright guy. I like him. I liked him from here. I, I got no objection to him. He just shouldn't do that. It's undisciplined. That's all. It's undisciplined. Even Matt Dillahunty sometimes does that. Shouldn't. Why? It's undisciplined. And don't get you anywhere. See what I'm saying? Think about it in the terms I just framed it. Christian makes a Dumbo version of atheism. Do you go, wow, this guy's so brilliant, he boxed me in, I, I'm checkmated? Or do you go, wow, this guy's an idiot, you shouldn't bother talking to him? The latter. Thank you. <laughs> the latter. <laughs> Thank you. It's my point. <laughs> you guys think that man came out of monkeys? Then why are there no more monkeys? Wow, he really boxed me in. Checkmate. Never thought about it that way. No, you just think the guy's not worth talking to. Same idea. You go, Jesus... You believe that, you know, a dead Jew rose from the dead and disappeared into the sky? Yeah, you know, it's a debate, so he got away with it. But if somebody started talking that way about Christianity in, in Twitter, bang, I'd be out right there. Wouldn't even bother responding to him. Wouldn't. Wouldn't even come close. Wouldn't even think about it. Be like, okay, bye, don't need to talk to you, obviously. Why? Because you don't take my, you don't take... That is all for now. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen.